cupcake. Yeah! Hey, cupcakes. You guys ready to do some disgusting science? Let's conduct some disgusting experiments to figure out why feet stink and make fake snot. We can do a whole bunch of crazy disgusting things because this box comes with six activities. Let's check out the back. Learn real science in a disgusting new way. And learn what creatures live on you. It's the grossest, most revolting science kit out there. Grow your own friendly germs and fuzzy molds, mix up a batch of coagulating fake blood, even make a stinky intestine. Now, before we start anything, I do have to say that you will need the help of a grown-up, so adult supervision is required. You need to read through all of the instructions carefully before doing each activity, and some of the activities require a stove or microwave to boil water. So we'll be working with some piping hot stuff. So now that we got all the rules and warnings out of the way, we can start doing some disgusting science. And here's the instructions manual. So everything comes inside of this huge Ziploc bag. Inside this kit, we get four Petri dishes, one handheld magnifier, four cotton swabs, one pack of gelatin, one pack of sugar, one pack of baking yeast, red food coloring, and green food coloring, a rubber balloon, and a plastic Ziploc bag. So the first disgusting experiment we're going to do is growing disgusting creatures. What lurks under your arms, between your stinky toes, and in your runny nose? Find out what nasty looking creatures grow on your body and in the environment around you. For this experiment, we will need our gelatin packet, our sugar packet, all four of our petri dishes, four cotton swabs, and our handheld magnifier. Now what you'll need from around the house is a small saucepan or microwave safe bowl. So I'm gonna go with a microwave safe bowl since it's easier. Measuring spoon and cup, clear tape, mixing spoon, antibacterial soap, water, and with all this stuff, rubbing alcohol is optional. So what are we doing with all this stuff? Making the culture medium, of course. So I'm gonna take this half cup of water and bring it to a boil. Okay, so I'm back with a half cup of boiling water. So we wanna be really careful when we pour that into our bowl. Take your measuring spoon and with a half tablespoon of gelatin, we are going to gradually stir that gelatin in our half cup of water. So throw in a little bit and stir it. Stir and stir and stir. Just throw in a little bit more. Keep on stirring. And we're gonna throw in a little bit more. And we're just gonna keep on stirring until our gelatin dissolves. It's kind of like making jello. That's exactly what jello is made up of gelatin. All right, you guys ready for our first segment of disgusting science secrets? Gelatin is a protein that you can get from boiling the skin, tendons, ligaments pretty much bones of either pigs or cows. Gelatin can be used in pretty much anything, but it's also used in a couple of our favorite snacks and treats. Marshmallows for one, Jello is totally made up of gelatin, and gummy candies, including fruit snacks. How's that for some disgusting science? Opening our sugar packet, take half a tablespoon of sugar, Oh, and some of it just hopped out the side of my tablespoon and into the bowl, but that's okay. Now we're gonna add some sugar and we're gonna stir that in. Okay, now that I have stirred and stirred until I can stir no more, we're gonna let our medium cool for about 10 minutes. So now that we've let our medium cool for about 10 minutes, we're gonna put this aside and prepare our Petri dishes. So taking the lid off of each of our Petri dishes, we are going to fill each of them with our medium. So we're gonna just pour it in like that. We're gonna make sure to evenly distribute them 
in each of our petri dishes. And my table is a little lopsided, which is probably why the medium is kind of moving to one side of the petri dish, but we can fix that. We'll just make sure we have enough for each of our petri dishes. And then we'll just drop a little more into each one that doesn't have enough. So now that we got our medium inside all four of our petri dishes, we are going to put the lids back on each and every one. And we're gonna let all four petri dishes gel for two hours. Okay, so now that we waited the two hours and our petri dish gelatin has solidified, we are ready to collect some nasty, funky bacteria samples. So it's time I introduce you to our test subjects. We have Chica, Freddy, a nasty old toothbrush, and a random shoe. We're going to remove the lids from our petri dishes. So this is what our medium or our gelatin looks like once it's solidified. It's kind of like the agar we use in our petri dishes for science class, just a little bit different. Now, our first test subject, which is Chica Chica. Let's take our cotton swab and take a sample from inside Chica's mouth. Some fun science facts for you. The mouth is probably the dirtiest part of your body and it comes into contact with the most bacteria. So we're going to take that cotton swab that touched Chica's mouth and we're going to make some zigzags into our gelatin. You can't really see it now, but later this is going to develop a whole bunch of bacteria from Chica's mouth. Our next test subject is Freddy. We're going to take this new cotton swab and pick Freddy's nose with it. Really get in there. Just really, really go to town. And now we're gonna take that very cotton swab that we were stuffing in Freddy's nose and looks like we got a good old booger out of there too. Rub it down our Petri dish, making sure that all of our nasty bacteria creatures have a chance to grow our next test subject is this nasty old toothbrush that was used to clean just about everything. So let's take our cotton swab and get a good swipe of that nasty, nasty toothbrush. I can only imagine what will grow on this Petri dish. So let's get that zigzag pattern on there. Now for our fourth and final test subject, our stinky old shoe. We're gonna take our cotton swab and just swipe the bottom of this shoe. Make sure you get it real good because this little shoe's been about everywhere you can think of. Now taking our cotton swab, we are going to take all of our bacteria on to our gelatin. Now we're gonna seal all of our Petri dishes shut with our lids and some tape. And we're gonna wait a couple of days actually to see what we develop in each of these Petri dishes. But with the power of editing, you guys don't have to wait the one or two days. We're gonna seal these with some tape and we definitely don't want to forget to label these. Before we kind of mix up our Petri dishes, we want to know which bacteria is from who or from what. Okay, after making sure our Petri dishes are labeled and taped shut, we are going to put them in a dark place to grow where they won't be disturbed. Three days later. Okay, so here we are three days later and I'm going to check inside of our Petri dishes to see if we've developed any bacteria. I'm going to wear my safety gloves. Even though the bacteria that we will be growing in these Petri dishes will not be hazardous, we still want to be on the safe side. It's only when the bacteria colonies are super huge that it may pose a bit of a risk. So after I went ahead and labeled my Petri dishes, I went ahead and placed them into the Ziploc bags just to really contain whatever would grow. And to be honest, I thought we would be growing a lot of bacteria on these things, but we grew just a little itty bitty bit on this funky toothbrush. So now let's take this out of the Ziploc bag. And if you can see real close, right over there 
is a little teeny tiny bacteria colony. So there is definitely bacteria in all of these petri dishes, but we just can't see it. The only time you can see the bacteria is when they've become big enough to form colonies, just like that right there. So we can take our magnifying glass and kind of sort of see that up close. It's a little speck of yellowish bacteria. Now on the dirty shoe, we didn't develop anything. Even though we swiped the bottom of the shoe, it really didn't develop much. The only thing it developed is that little speck right there. And we can use our magnifying glass to really see that. So it's just a little white speck of bacteria. I really don't see anything much on the rest of this. Just these tiny white specks here and there. So the dirty shoe and the funky toothbrush pretty much have taken the lead at this point. Now for Chica's mouth, let's go ahead and see what bacteria grew on Chica's mouth. So are you guys seeing anything? I'm not really seeing much from Chica's mouth. So Chica's mouth is a fail. We didn't develop any bacteria on it just yet. Now, let's check Freddy's nose. Do we have any growth on Freddy's nose? I don't see any growth on Freddy's nose yet either. It could be that three days is just too early for some of these bacteria to form colonies. So I'm going to leave these petri dishes in that dark place for another maybe seven days and I will take pictures and post them on the Cupcake Kids Club website so that you guys can keep track on what develops inside of these petri dishes after a couple more days. On to our next experiment. What you'll need for this experiment is your plastic bag, baking yeast, and sugar. What you'll need from around the house is warm water, bread, measuring spoon, and a large bowl with a lid. So what are we doing with all of this? We are making flatulent yeast. Beans, beans, beans. The more you eat, the more you pass gas. Get a whiff of this and find out why. So what we're gonna do is cut our bag of yeast, put half of it into our plastic bag, just like that. In case you guys don't know what yeast looks like, that's what it looks like. We're gonna reseal this packet with a bit of tape and put it in the refrigerator. We are going to add one teaspoon of sugar to our bag. Add four tablespoons of your warm water. So there's one, two, three, and four. We're gonna close the bag and slosh it around to mix everything inside of the bag. That's looking pretty gross if you ask me right now. We're going to tear off some of the bread, make it into tiny itty bitty pieces. Oh, this is gonna get really messy. So let's just kind of make it into tiny itty bitty pieces and kind of scrape it up in the end. So we're gonna need enough bread pieces to make four tablespoons. And we might not have enough. We'll see when we get to it. There's one tablespoon. Put it into the bag. Here's another tablespoon. Put this into the bag. And I think we had three tablespoons. We need one more tablespoon. There's three tablespoons. Almost four. Let's make it a little bit more. Add a little bit more pieces in there. And here's four. Now we're gonna get most of the air out of the bag. Just kind of push all the air out of there. Make sure it's mostly out and seal the bag. We're gonna slosh it around to mix our breadcrumbs in there. That's a mighty disgusting science. This is kind of what your food looks like once it's broken up into your stomach. We're gonna take our big bowl, put our little tiny bag in there, and fill the bowl about halfway with water. Gonna need more water. Okay, so our bowl is filled halfway with warm water. We're gonna put the lid right on it to seal all of our gassy goodness. And in about one to two hours, 
that a little scientific concoction we just created is going to pass gas. So we've waited about two hours for our yeast to pass gas, and by the looks of the lid on our bowl, it looks like something passed gas, because it's totally foggy inside. Let's go ahead and open this and see what's going on with our bag. Okay, so after about two hours, our yeast has passed gas. It's gassy, which is signified by the swelling of the bag. If you guys can see, the bag is totally inflated. So that pretty much means the yeast is farting inside the bag. Now, if you look closely, you can even see bubbles rising to the surface. And that is all a part of the gas the yeast is passing. And remember, we took out all of the air, so there was no air inside that bag. That is all yeast fart. You guys ready for some more disgusting science secrets? It's alive! It's alive! Yeast is lots and lots of tiny living creatures, much like bacteria. And it's a kind of fungus, like mushrooms and mold. Yeast digests sugars and starches in the bread, and it gives off carbon dioxide. It's like passing gas. But when humans pass gas, it's actually caused by bacteria in your intestines. The bacteria eats the stuff your body can't digest, and it makes a stinky gas that comes out when you fart. Let's move on to our next experiment. For this experiment, you will be needing your balloon from the kit, and from around the house, you'll be needing a slice of bread, some vinegar, cooking oil or vegetable oil, and a plate. So what will we be doing with all of this? We'll be discovering disgusting digestion. So we're going to pretend this balloon is a stomach. We're gonna blow up the balloon and let the air out. This will stretch it out and make the experiment much easier. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, so our balloon came with a huge hole in it, so we won't be able to do this experiment with this balloon. So I'm going to see if I have a balloon around the house, preferably a pink one, because we want it to kind of look like a stomach, right? Okay, so the day is saved by my old party decorations. Let's blow this up. And let the air out. So we're going to pour a bit of our cooking oil or vegetable oil into the stomach and rub it around to coat the inside. So that should be good. We're gonna rub it around to coat the inside of the stomach and we're going to pour out any extra oil. Take some bread from the center of the slice. We're gonna break this up into little pieces. We're going to stuff our stomach with the food. Oh goodness, how am I gonna get all that in there? Okay, now we're going to add a few drops of vinegar. So the vinegar acts as the stomach acid that smells disgusting just like the contents in your stomach. Now with one hand, I'm going to pinch the top of the stomach, and with my other hand, I'm going to squish and knead the stomach to blend all the digestive mixture together. Okie dokie, so now it's super squishy. So for this next part, I'm gonna use the plate because it's gonna get really disgusting. We're going to pretend that our stomach is now an intestine full of digested food. I'm going to squeeze the end of the intestine opposite the opening, and I'm gonna keep that hand in place. I'm gonna move my other hand over the first hand and squeeze again, like that. Oh! Uh, and that's exactly what's supposed to happen. Oh, uh, the food just spilled out with all of the stomach acid. So gross. So there goes all of the contents of our stomach and our intestine. So you guys ready for some more disgusting science secrets? When you swallow food, it moves from your mouth through your esophagus and into your stomach. 
Muscles in your stomach mix the food with enzymes and stomach acids that help break it down and digest it. When you squeeze the balloon stomach, it simulates this action. Then the muscles in your stomach push the food into your intestines where your body absorbs the yummy nutrients. And whatever your body can't digest comes out of the other end, if you know what I mean. When you squeeze the balloon intestine hand over hand, it simulates peristalsis. Peristalsis is just a fancy word for the wave-like muscle contractions that move food through your digestive tract. It's what moves chewed food from your mouth to your stomach, from your stomach through your intestines and out the other end. Moving on to our next experiment, you will be needing gelatin and your green food coloring. From around the house, you will need a small microwavable bowl, a measuring spoon, and some water. So what are we making with all of this? We are making sickening slimy snot. So we're gonna take a tablespoon of our water Oh, just a little bit more than a tablespoon and add it to the bowl, which is fine because the more water, the slimier our snot. We're going to microwave this for about 15 seconds. Okay, so we're back with our hot water. Now I'm going to take one drop of my green food coloring and put it inside my bowl. There you go. And now I'm going to take one tablespoon of gelatin and while I'm stirring, I'm going to add it into my bowl. So gradually adding my gelatin and stirring. Oh, whoa, now it's totally turning into snot. You guys ready for some more disgusting science secrets? Your nose is lined with a mucous membrane that makes mucus. Mucus is the scientific term for snot. Its stickiness helps trap dust and dirt particles in the air you breathe. Without mucus, your lungs would eventually get clogged with dust and lots of dirty gunk. Mucus is made of water and mucin. Mucin is a branched polysaccharide, which pretty much is long chains of sugar molecules. Who knew mucus and snot had sugar molecules in it? Okay, so our snot has really, really set in. That's exactly what it looks like. It's not runny snot, it's sticky. Oh, thick snot. If that had happened when it was runny snot, I would have had snot all over the place. There you go, it's so jiggly. It's a jiggly, big, giant booger. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you guys had an amazing time doing these really disgusting science experiments. I actually had a lot of fun. Remember to give this video a thumbs up if you guys are scientists at heart and you want to see more science videos. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you never miss another cool scientific video again. And as always, remember to stay sweet and I will see you later. Bye cupcakes. Never miss a sprinkle-tastic moment. Subscribe to become a Cupcake Kid.